Hello and welcome to another Fresh Off The Stalls. So, a bit of deja vu here, uh, the last time, and I think so far the only time I've ever done a review from Elephant and Castle train station uh, was for Titanic, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, quite a while ago. So I'm back with another Daniel Tarento production and this time it's Gods and Monsters. So I'm a little animated as you probably know because I'm a little drunk. Oh, I see I'm tipsy. Um, it's press night, I've, I've been hobnobbing with the cast. Ew, marvellous. Well, actually not really. Um, I'm kind of very shy when it comes to the cast because they were absolutely excellent to this. I'll get on to that in a moment. And also the fact it's really odd hobnobbing with people who you've just seen their willies throughout. I'll get on to that later as well. Um, I don't know what I'm going to say about this because it's, it's... This is gobsmacking. This is probably one of the most gobsmacking pieces of theatre I've seen in a while. And I know that sounds like... Well, that sounds like a train passing. I know it sounds like empty praise and some sort of really sort of hollow pull quote that critics usually say, but I, I genuinely feel this. Um, so this is Gods and Monsters, uh, based on the book by Christopher Bram. Uh, it was turned into a film uh, with Ian McKellen, and I believe Oscar winning, if my memory serves me rightly. So this is the world premiere of a stage adaptation of the book vis-a-vis -vis the film. Um, so I didn't quite know what to expect, not having read the book or having seen the film. So I came into this completely fresh. And it's so difficult to try and find the words. I know as a, as, as a reviewer, I really should, because my whole point is of existing in this capacity is to have those pithy pull quotes. But wow, this was something else and I think I'm going to have to sleep in this before I can really say something with any sort of real gravitas and any sort of coherence it's just absolutely mind-blowing so um, the play follows James Whale who was the director of Frankenstein Bride of Frankenstein um, following his sexuality in his later life and sort of his uh, obsession I suppose with uh, his gardener uh, Clayton Boone um, played by uh, muscled Adonis uh, Will Austin, who you've probably seen me uh, post photos of on my blog. It's <laughs> it's just really I, I honestly don't know what to say about it in in the fact that I'm I've been drinking and this has just had such an impact on me. It's it's really yeah. I found my it's it brims with a really sort of dangerous and uncomfortable. Uh, sexuality and almost eroticism it's crazy in that um, you have it, it's it's almost sort of a, a fluid mindset in that you're watching something that is it's going through his mind post stroke it's really intense it's really engrossing your in from the very start and I'm, I'm with it until the very last syllable of the very last word, and I don't even actually the last word, you're in it to the very last beat of the actual production. Um, it's intense, it's disturbing, absolutely disturbing, in that um, there's some, it's really quite dark, really quite twisted. In ways you wouldn't quite imagine, there's some, some visual things as well, which are just could take you by complete surprise, um, and that you just actually don't know how to process I think that's the thing you're not quite ever quite sure how to process this this play because it's just that impactful uh, that distressing that it's so difficult to try and put words so I'm gonna try and like let's try and analyze this um, in some sort of structure production I loved the the, the very elongated thrust setting it felt like you were sat in a glass box looking into the living room. Um, I loved the set. I loved the sort of torn posters of the bygone horror movies era, sort of like uh, placed around the set. Um, it's really good. It, it, it does enough to suggest time and place and enough to suggest themes and just changing hands here. 
to suggest themes, etc. Uh, but it needs to, uh, and really lets the play breathe. The set isn't the main thing here, and, and, and the play is really what comes through the most, especially uh, under the direction and cast. Cast, oh my god, absolutely brilliant. I can't fault anyone in the cast. I can very easily, though, pick one person in particular who was fantastic. And it has to be Ian Gelder as James Whale. Utterly one of the best performances I've seen full stop. Just I hung on his every word and it's he's such a charismatic and domineering actor and especially in this role uh, as, as James Whale as well. Um, and I love the fact that there are things where like his, his whole it's sort of a state of mind post stroke is, is very fragile and very subtly he puts it through so like all of a sudden like he'll he'll stop mid sentence um, and stumble and sort of or say words wrongly and it, it's, it's very small touches like so small that you don't really notice it unless you're really looking for them he's brilliant just like you never know how to take as well you don't is he actually a dirty old perv or is he incredibly manipulative um, it's a question you're asking right up to the end. Here's the most astonishing thing. That's not to that's not to poo poo or any of the other cast. They're all absolutely amazing. I particularly love uh, Lachelle Carl as Maria as well. She's wonderful. Um, just a, a great cast. This is probably going to be one of the most difficult things I'm going to have to write about fully. Um, not because I'll probably be doing it on a hangover, um, but because, as I said, it's. It's so difficult to process, but it's absolutely astounding as a play. Um, oh, I mentioned uh, male nudity. It never feels gratuitous. Uh, that's coming from me, though. I used to review a lot of gay films, so male nudity is pretty much a walk in the park for me. Um, uh, yeah. I'm going to leave it at that, because you probably don't want me drunkly rambling on Elephant and Castle Station. It's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. Um, please look out for my full review as much as it's going to be difficult for me to write because just trying to process and put my thoughts together on this is going to be a real challenge um, but the fact I was so moved yet yeah, one, one of the things I found at one point I actually caught my jaw quivering I'm still not sure if that was out of fear or out of remorse or out of God knows whatever other emotion that I can think of at the moment but just totally hooked um do check back for some more written, comprehensive and better formulated words than this rambling crock of rubbish. Um, but certainly see this if you can. This is probably one of the most exciting, unexpected and utterly astonishing things I've seen for a long, long time. Um, fantastic uh, production by Daniel Torrento, as always brilliant direction by Russell Laby and I know I haven't really dissected that in length here, I don't think I am in the capacity at the moment to really do that um, far too much Prosecco um, I'll get back to you on that later Russell, but seriously, this is something you absolutely need to see I don't think I can be any more any more upfront about that so anyway, this is me signing off, um, and we'll get back to you soon. And we'll do another fresh off the stall soon for something else this week, no doubt. Um, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, everyone involved in this. It's been mind-boggling. Like, I'm surprised not sort of standing here just for the entire length of this video going. Pretty much the emotions I went through repeatedly. I'm just going to leave. Goodbye!